So today is the day that I will be replacing the oil filter housing gasket, the oil cooler gasket, and then the water pump gas or the water pump and thermostat, which are down there. So I've got my new parts here, water pump, thermostat, new bolts. I think I accidentally doubled up on the order of bolts. I forgot that it came with it and I think I ordered a set, but it doesn't hurt to have a backup set because these are aluminum and there's a chance I could break them. Uh, also got myself a pair of new bolts for the thermostat, some new bolts for the oil filter housing, two gaskets for the oil filter housing, some coolant, some brand new oil and oil filter. That's really all you need there. Unless you break something along the way, which is very possible. So I think, uh, the first thing I need to get out of the way is how do you, you get that bolt off? Most people, um, or I should say the shop would just remove the manifold because that is, I will say the easiest way to remove this thing, but it's not necessary. Um, most people come in through here and can get at it with, uh, an extension and a couple wobble drives. I did something different. I used a combination of an eight millimeter combination wrench and an eight millimeter ratcheting combination wrench to get that off. You have to be very, very careful because 12 point is not designed to engage e-torques. So just make sure that when you're, when you're engaging it, you put pressure axially in on the fastener so that this stays in the best engagement possible on those, I don't know, teeth of the points. So that's the best way to do that that I've found. I did have to remove, I did have to remove the oil sensor and I had to use a 15 16 because I didn't have a metric wrench large enough to go over that. So you can see I also, I drain the oil and I have a note to myself here that there is no oil in the engine. I also put a note on the steering wheel in there if you can see that. That way I don't accidentally start the car without oil in it. Um, I must say this car is ridiculously easy to work on. It has such great access to every component. Um, I've, I'm blown away. This is probably the easiest car I've ever worked on. Uh, case in point, the water pump is right there. And the thermostat is right there. It seems like on most of the 3 Series and 5 Series vehicles, that's a lot harder to get to. But on here, you take off the bottom tray, which I have sitting over here. And you just take off the periphery bolts, which are eight millimeter, or, eight, or they're not bolts, they're screws. Mine was missing one from a previous owner, but you know, that's what you get. And you can see the oil that was leaking. Uh, it wasn't a terrible leak, but it's enough to make a mess, enough for me to say that it's time to replace it. Um, you also wanna take off the radiator cowl here up top, which I've shown in a previous video. It's super easy and the here's the only tricky part and this is the kind of lazy lack of planning that i've only seen on american vehicles this cover has no way of coming off so at the factory what they did is this was on the engine they raised the engine up from the bottom bolted it in place but for whatever reason like, there's no room to get this thing off. So I'm not even quite sure how I'm going to get that off. I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove the three bolts for this. I can probably push this whole thing back a little bit or pull it up and then maybe be able to wiggle it off. That's going to be such a pain. Plus, then how am I going to get these off? So, and I, because I, I can't get a socket in there. There's not enough room for a socket. So that's... The first and really only problem I've ever encountered with a 
design flaw of this car. Well, other than the camshaft thing, but we're not going to talk about that. I'm serious. This thing is, has been so easy to work on for everything. The only problem is that there's no lift point in the front center. So the only way to lift this car up without an actual hoist is to use floor jacks on the two front mounting points and then put jack stands somewhere in the front subframe or suspension area. This isn't load bearing. That isn't load bearing. These are just for safety backup. Those one, that one right there and that one over there, the load bearing for the front. And those are on the center ball joints on these lower control arms. I don't like putting them there, but it's the best I can do. I don't want to put it underneath the strut because this is sprung. So when you load that up, the whole thing is just going to sink. And I don't like that. It's not as rigid. So you have to lift up the front like this, put the front end jack stands after removing the wheels, then lift the back in the center. I'll show you where I lift that. I'm not actually recommending that you lift it here, but this is where I'm going to, this is where I've been doing it. There's a structural member right here and there's two bolts that come out for the, um, braces, the cross bracing. This is right now isn't actually load bearing. This is again, just here for safety. The actual load bearing ones are these right here. And you just have to teeter totter the thing all the way up. On the Z4M and on the Z4s with the M54 engine, there is a center lift point in the front. This car doesn't have that. It's really annoying. And it makes this car super sketchy to be underneath. And that's why I don't like being underneath this car. But that's just the way it is. So I have finished the job now. You'll probably notice I did not replace the cover for the oil cooler and that's because I'm actually going to modify it slightly. I'm going to actually cut this thing so that I can just get it on and off more easily like this. So I could have had this on and then tried to torque this up but that never would have went over too well. So. I'm gonna take the non-reversible approach and I, I'm okay with that because I can always pick up another one of these things online. Overall, the job went really well. The only tricky part was actually getting the hoses off underneath. For the water pump and thermostat, these hoses were really stuck on and it's not that they're hard, or like, you know, cracked or old and brittle. They're still very soft, but they're just really stuck on there, which in a way is a good thing because that means they're probably not gonna come off. But it was it was a real struggle to get them off. Putting everything back on was super easy. Um, you got three bolts for the water pump, two bolts for the thermostat. Um, I'll go into the torque specs of everything in just a little bit. Um, and then I tried to clean everything up as best I could, but... There's only so so much you can do when you have limited access to everything. All right, so I'm going to go over some of the tools that I used and the tools I thought were really helpful for this job. Um, I'm going to start with the oil filter housing. To get that off, I primarily used these two wrenches right here. Um, I mentioned this earlier in the video. These are two 8mm combination wrenches, and those... Uh, work really well for primarily that screw right back there. Um, you remove this oil sensor with a 15 sixteenths. You could probably use a metric equivalent to that, but this is what I had and it fits really, really well. Uh, most people don't actually know that a lot of these wrenches are actually the same size. They just change the label. And so, you know, like a eight millimeter and a three-eighths might be the same. I don't know which ones are actually the same, but a lot of them are actually exactly the same. So the next one that is a little um, less, I don't know, probably less known or less familiar to me are for these ones. I use this box end wrench, that which is three-eighths, and that's what I use to crack these loose because remember I had that cover on before and I couldn't get any sockets, I couldn't get my E12 sockets in. 
Not only that, but my E12 socket, which I'll grab here, is half inch drive and it just, it does fit on these ones. But the problem is that now my ratchet doesn't fit here and I don't have an extension short enough to make my ratchet fit in this space. So I went the less conventional route and used a 3 8 inch 12 point. And that worked really, really well. Just be very careful with these because um, as, I've, as I've said, these are not designed, these 12 points are not designed to engage on e-torques. To torque these up, I used a quarter inch drive, 3 8 inch six point, and this fits on there really snug. Uh, if you're very careful and you tighten these two, again, I'll, I'll go over the torque specs um, in a minute. If you just tighten them very slowly, only to the torque spec, you should do just fine with one of these. And those are the only things you need to worry about for the for the upper portion of this job. Then uh, you have to remove this hose. You don't have to remove anything else really. Um, you know, just remember, don't forget to take that off. Cleaning this up is not too difficult. Just make sure you have a ton of towels. Um, it does drip oil everywhere. I recommend removing your belt. I actually haven't replaced my belt yet, but I'll get to doing that shortly. Um, that way you don't get a bunch of uh, oil and coolant on your belt on the pulleys. Make sure you clean the pulleys afterwards. And I think that's all the considerations you need to take for this portion of the job. Uh, talking about the water side now, you will need a 10 millimeter wrench, either 3 eighths or quarter inch drive to remove the two fasteners from the old thermostat, which go through these two holes in the water pump. These are the old ones, by the way. If you want me to take this apart and see what's inside, let me know. I'm really interested, but because this is technically still a working unit, um, because this was preventative maintenance, these weren't broken. I just want to, my car's at 100,000 miles. It's time to re replace them so it doesn't fail in, in use. But if you want to see what's inside one of these, let me know and maybe you can convince me to open it up. Um, then... So getting back to the cool and stuff, then you're going to need for sure your, for sure your E12 to remove these aluminum bolts, which go through here. Um, and that's that's no issue. You can use the full size stuff for three eighths. Um, I recommend having a good ratchet, and also have a breaker bar. Breaker bars are really handy for uh, for jobs like this. Um, the quarter inch drive torque wrench is kind of a must for doing the. Uh, the oil filter housing and oil cooler and you can see how bad and how smashed this thing is um, this is the one that i think was leaking i don't think this one was leaking this one isn't quite as bad but it's still it's pretty smashed and they're these are pretty hard compared to the new ones um, to get the old hoses off i needed to use mainly these two ends of these junky um, trim removal tools. So those two ends worked the best. Um, this one also worked a little bit. Just be careful not to rip or tear them. They're pretty strong. Um, you, you really can't, I can't say it enough, but you really have to manhandle those hoses to get them off. There's no other way about it. And then make sure you have some good cleaning supplies so you can clean out the oil filter housing. Make sure there is no debris left in that oil filter housing. Because you're gonna be working on the coolant side and the dirty and clean side of the oil filter and your oiling system, you really have to make sure there's no residue or abrasive dust or anything inside there. This has to be very, very clean when you put it back in. Um, also, it'll probably be full of oil and gunk like under this area. It was caked full of this really nasty sludgy stuff. And same with um, underneath in the back of the oil filter housing. It was. It was really disgusting. Um, it took a lot of work to get that stuff off. And I, I really think that's uh, that's about it. It's really not that tough of a job. Uh, just takes some patience and some time. Um, from a manufacturing perspective, I'm very interested in how they got this thing together. Because I there are no seams. It's not fastened. I think it's crimped right here. So that this here is a different part from that there, but it is so seamless. 
So I also, I did not buy the OEM or the uh, BMW branded parts. I bought a Pureberg water pump and a uh, Valer brand thermostat. And I'm actually happier with that decision now because the original unit to the car, which is a BMW unit, is a Pureberg. And this and my new unit look exactly the same except for the BMW logo. This unit right here, if you look, is a Valer. So it's it's the same stuff, same manufacturers. I bet you they're building it to the same specification as the BMW parts. They're just selling them for a lot less because it doesn't have the BMW logo on it. Uh, this time I went with 530 high mileage. I've been using 040 standard Castrol Edge up to this point. Um, I When I bought this, I thought that it was 040 high mileage, but I was stupid that day and I read it wrong, but eh, it'll, it'll work just fine. Uh, 530 is actually what is recommended for the engine, not 040. However, 040 is, it's still in the list of recommended. And then I got some original BMW coolant. I've heard conflicting uh, advice on whether you actually need the real BMW stuff for corrosion resistance or if you can just use the green stuff. I've heard from everybody that you should not mix them, but, you know, it came with the kit. I'll use the good stuff. Oh, almost forgot. Torque specs. Um, I'll have the torque specs up on screen right now. The torque specs for the oil filter cap is 25 newton meters. It's actually written right on the cap. The oil filter housing bolts, which are these ones, they are steel, is 22 newton meters. You're not gonna be able to actually torque any of them up except for this one, um, unless you remove the manifold and remove this front subframe piece. It's just not gonna happen. So I just used my eight millimeter wrench um, to estimate on the back one and this one, and I used my torque wrench on this one. That way I could kind of get a feel for roughly how tight it had to be. These ones, which is the oil cooler to the oil filter housing, need to be 16 Newton meters, and I was able to torque all of these with that deep well 3 8 inch six point socket with my quarter inch uh, torque wrench. The water pump for the three M8s, which are the E12 drive, need to be tightened to eight newton meters plus 90 degrees. It's pretty tight to get it down there and that's when I recommend using the breaker bar and just trying to get a good angle so you can see visually how far to turn um, for 90 degrees. It's not super critical that you get it to exact 90, just don't go too far and don't go not far enough. And then lastly, the two M6 bolts that bolt the thermostat to the water pump are eight newton meters. I don't remember what the torque is officially on those, but I figured M6 steel, it, it eight newton meters was, uh, was plenty. I think that's just good and snug in the German world. All right, well, I think that's all I have for this job. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. I will be happy to answer them. Or if you have any suggestions, I'm open to any suggestions you have on, uh, on this job or share your experience with uh, what you've done. It's good to share this sort of information. That way we can all kind of uh, collectively have the best answers for what we're doing. So I'll see you guys next time. And here's the engine running now. I don't think I've ever shown this engine running. You can hear the lifter tick. But uh, that's what you get after you get a little bit of air in the system and it hasn't run for a few days. Uh, this engine really likes to run every single day. If it isn't run up to full temp every single day, it doesn't run quite as well. But that's BMW for you.